Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop for today's filler episode. That's right, it's a filler episode. Click away if you want to see lots being made. Because what I'm going to do is I am going to hand sand this blade and I am going to talk about what I would suggest to the young, inspired and excited people out there that want to become blacksmiths. What would be a good way of going about that? So, this is a talk that I gave at Maker Central a while ago, but I did a very bad job of it. I need to, I need to practice my talk stuff. And, uh, and I'm hoping to get a lot better at that in the future with all things. Things take time to do well, it takes practice to do well, and I did not prepare enough to make sure that I did a good job. I did not prepare enough to make sure that I did a good job. And it's the same lesson that I learned here in the workshop. Preparation and effort and discipline and the care to do the job right always is worth it. So, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is you take a blacksmithing class. Now, there are blacksmithing classes all over the world. And yes, it's going to be expensive to take your first blacksmithing class, but it's going to be a much better introduction into the craft than trying to go at it completely ground zero. Right, so the way that I learn stuff, it's not the best way to go about learning things. The best thing for me would be to seek out mentors in the craft and learn from them and study from them. I've got a business to run, and so the cost that I pay is I end up making a lot of mistakes for being able to run this business and share the journey with you on YouTube. That's, that's, that's something that you can't always do. And if you want to learn the craft efficiently while getting as good as possible in the shortest amount of time as possible, I think you need to get yourself a mentor. And here's how. You take a blacksmithing class. And when you go to the blacksmithing class, you make sure that you're the best student there. And I don't mean the best student in terms of you are the best in the class. You're going to be new to it. You're going to suck. You better be aware of that. I mean the best student there in terms of the student that is the most curious, the student that appears to be the most willing to learn. You want to be the type of student that looks so committed, even though you've never done it before, you look so committed to learning the craft that the instructor knows that any extra effort he gives for you is gonna be worth it. You know, blacksmiths and bladesmiths, they're nice folk and they love sharing the craft. Most of them have no reservations sharing anything they know and that's an incredible thing. The thing is, is that nobody likes putting effort to help somebody when that effort is not worth it. When that person gives up, doesn't continue, doesn't press forward in the craft and doesn't continue learning. You know, that's, that's no fun. You don't want to waste that effort. You want to be the person that they know is committed to doing it. Now, that's in your first class. The truth is, in your first class, you may well decide that it's not for you, that you didn't like it, that it takes too long to get anything right in the craft. And you'll spend that class being a great student, asking the right questions, because you should, because even though you're paying for the craft, you should really, you should really consider it a great honor to be taking a lesson from the talented blacksmiths and bladesmiths that are teaching this stuff, because a lot of the time they're teaching classes because they enjoy it, not because it's the best business decision for them. And so you should be a diligent student anyway, and once that class is done, you may not like it. You may say it's not for you, you may say it requires just a little bit too much patience and you want something that you can do that has a little bit of a faster result, say. Or moving hot metal and grinding stuff and making dust and noise isn't for you. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. Golly, that is a beautiful finish. We're at 220 here and uh, something I learned from some Nick Wheeler videos and this is, he's a phenomenal, look at his YouTube videos, they're amazing, you're gonna learn so much. You should take a class though from people first because he's mentioned before in his videos that a 220 that he does that's clean will outperform in terms of the aesthetics, you know, in a thousand grit finish that's got scratches in it that aren't meant to be there. And you know, when I look at the section of this that is nice and clean, I can truly believe that. Anyway, hopefully though, you do enjoy the class. And if you enjoy these videos and you know that you're gonna be bad added it from the get-go and you know it's going to take time to learn it, you probably will enjoy the class because let me tell you, it is truly, truly thrilling to make this stuff and to learn these crafts and obviously that's why I do it. And here's the result. You took that class and you were a diligent student. You were committed to taking the critique that the instructor heeded and learning from it and doing better at every step, asking the right questions, the questions that applied to you, not questions like, hey, how do I make explosion pattern Damascus? Because it's your first time blacksmithing. Asking how to grip the hammer is a much more appropriate question to be asking in that situation. There's no point getting knowledge that's way out of your knowledge zone. Ask the sensible questions first. And the instructor is hopefully gonna like you. Which means that when you go asking him questions, like, where can I buy an anvil in this area? 
Where can I buy a forge? What do you recommend? He's going to help you and he's going to give you advice and knowledge that is going to be first hand and invaluable. It's going to be so much more efficient and effective than doing hours and hours and hours of research on Google and YouTube trying to find the best answer to these questions. No, just get a professional's opinion. Pay for that opinion because you're taking a class. Pay for that opinion because you're being a great student who's making it a pleasure for them to teach the class, but get that professional's opinion. There are lots of schools of thought on, you know, what is the best forge for a beginner and the best anvil for a beginner and the best way to swing a hammer and all of that. But frankly, it's just absolutely ridiculous for that to get in the way and hamper the opportunity that you have right now to type in learn blacksmithing and then your area, get in a car, get on a train, get on a bus, however long it takes to get to the nearest place and learn from them. And the ideal outcome is, is that as you become a diligent student, the instructor sees that time spent teaching you is time well spent, you might be able to ask to come and help sweep the floor. The trick is you wanna make it worth his time to be there in his shop. So, if you want to be in his shop and absorb some knowledge, you've got to give a proposition that's going to be worth it to him. If you're annoying and you're not any use to the workshop and you're going to be getting in his way, nothing's going to happen. He's not going to want you there and that's not a good thing. But if you're able to truly help out, help sweep the floor, get out of the way when you're needed to get out of the way, and you continue to show that you are interested and effort spent with you to teach you more about the craft is going to be effort well spent because you're going to go and take that knowledge and go home and practice in the craft, you can end up learning stuff. And you can end up having yourself a mentor. And though it seems far-fetched, this is a big part of how it is that I learnt, how it is that plenty of my friends in this field learnt so much that helped carry them so far. Remember this, the underpinning to all of this, past just enjoying the class, if you really want to learn the craft, is you need to be committed and determined to learning the craft. And you need to know that you're going to suck the first time you do it. And you need to be willing to commit yourself to honest critique of your work. This here isn't even with here. I need to fix that by bringing that bevel back down. Honest critique of your work, accepting the critique from others, and being driven to do better each day. So that character that's going to underpin your success as you continue or as you begin to learn this craft. So to all the young viewers, and even not so young viewers, you can start this anytime, who are watching and they really, and you, if you really want to get into this craft, go get yourself a blacksmithing course, be the best student on that course possible, be determined to learn that craft. If you decide that it's for you, jump right in, both feet first, take on the hobby and learn the skills that you need to learn and enjoy it because it's a hell of a lot of fun. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this little filler episode. I'm gonna see you on the next little filler episode. Bye-bye.